As the accountant of IDEAL, today I'll be going through the balance day adjustments with you. This is the trial balance created for the accounting period. Other information include the value of the stock take conducted at the end of the year, which revealed a stock loss of 3,100. The stock loss is recorded in the general journal where we debit stock loss and credit inventory control. This will then allow us to calculate the gross profit as seen here. Next, we also have to write off a bad debt of $200 from Mr. Wong. There are two entries involving bad debt, one with DCA and another with the allowance for doubtful debts. This bad debt is then recorded under expenses in the income statement. After creating an aging schedule, the business decided to allocate specific allowance for two of their debtors as well as a 10% of general allowance. This is then recorded into the general journal as can be seen here. Next, I noticed an error of omission where the contract entry was omitted in the accounts. So I recorded it into the general journal where I debit CCA and credit DCA. I then proceeded to make adjustments for the depreciation of non-current assets. These were the calculations under the straight line method and the reducing balance method. After this, I made adjustments to accrued and prepaid expenses as well as income. They were all recorded in the general journal as shown. Next, I was informed that the owner made drawings for the celebration of Malaysia Day, so I included that into the statement of changes of equity. The last adjustment I made was for the disposal of the fixture. I started by removing the cost of the fixture and then the accumulated depreciation which I've calculated as shown. Then I recorded the proceeds from the disposal of the fixture and closed off the disposal account. Now my income statement was complete and I calculated a net loss. From there, I prepared my balance sheet as well as statement of changes in equity. These financial reports were created with four important concepts. Firstly, the accrual concept defines profit as the difference between the revenue earned and the expenses incurred. This is seen when we make adjustments for accruals and prepayments. Since the advertising expenses was only $6,000, this was rightfully recorded in the income statement. The prepaid amount is recorded in the balance sheet as a current asset. Next is the going constant convention which states that a company will continue indefinitely. This is seen in the computation of depreciation as it assumes that the company will continue to use the non-current asset until they are fully depreciated. Prepayments as well as accruals are done in the expectation that the business will continue operations in the future. Products are also recorded as assets as they are believed to be able to generate future economic benefits for the business. Next, the accounting period concept states that the life of a business can be broken up into different time periods. This is seen in the income statement, balance sheet, and statement of changes in equity where the date is specified. Adjustments for prepayments and accrual also serve to match the revenue earned and expenses incurred for that time period. The last concept is the prudence concept which requires accountants to be careful and to understate profits rather than to overstate them. This is seen when we make allowance for doubtful debts which is used to absorb bad debts when they happen. This way, we understand the profit and avoid over expanding. Inventories are also recorded at cost price as per the historical cost concept to prevent overstating the asset value. After understanding the financial reports, we will now present them to the owner Alex. Alex needs to know the general well-being of his business and whether or not to take expansionary action. To decide on that, the return on investment ratio is calculated as shown. A negative value suggests that the company is generating more losses for one share of its capital. To prevent this from worsening, the company should increase their debt capital instead of solely relying on investments. However, they should be careful not to overestimate the business's capability to repay. They can also try to increase their profit margins by decreasing the cost as well as increasing prices. However, there are limitations of the return on investment ratio to consider. It does not take into account the risk profile as a high ROI may suggest that the investment is extremely risky. The time taken is also not considered. The investments can be used on something else more efficient. The current ratio is used to assess the company's ability to repay short-term debts. Adios current ratio calculated by the formula shown is 6.77. This is a very high current ratio that suggests that Ideal is very capable of paying its obligations. However, this hints to an inefficient use of assets as the company can cover more liabilities. As such, the company should increase their debt capital. We should also note the limitation of the current ratio which takes into account all assets. Next, the gross profit ratio shows how effectively the company is generating profit. Adios gross profit ratio is 28.52% which suggests that the company can reduce their selling prices by that amount without incurring any losses. This may seem good however, when compared to the previous years, it has been showing a decremental trend, indicating that the company is generating less profit. 
Moreover, in this financial period, the business suffers a net loss which concerns their financial sustainability. As such, it is advisable for Alex to focus on sustaining his business rather than expanding it. The best method to do that is by increasing the company's profit. Firstly, he can start by keeping track of overhead expenses such as labor costs by using a job costing sheet. This way, he can manage the labor costs and reduce the expenses on salary, which is the largest component of expenses in the income statement. Next, the business should improve their credit policies to reduce the expenses of doubtful debts as well as bad debts. The company should revise credit terms at appropriate intervals to match the needs of the customer, provide discounts to encourage early payments, and generate reminders. Lastly, the company should improve their stock management to prevent stock loss from happening. The company should eliminate stagnant stocks, adopt just in time to hold less inventories, and provide discounts. And that's it! Thank you!